What's up, all you cool kids? This is Daisy Collins of TsunamiRose.net coming at you live from my craft room here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And you guys, I forgot to switch back to the program where I could show my face, so whatever. Anyways, we're going to continue on. We are here with part one of making a junk journal from a vintage Avon box. So I'm really excited to start this. I actually found this box at an estate sale and um, I got it for free. So I didn't actually pay anything for this. Hi, Shelly B. Uh, so this junk journal on the cover, it says Avon Leisure Hours Rapture Foaming Bath Oil. So that's what this is. Um, it's a really gorgeous box. It is gold foiled. Um, and it just says Avon Products, Inc. New York, which I'm going to cut this off eventually. Um, so we are going to get started here. I'm not sure how old this is. It's probably from the 70s. I was thinking 80s, but somebody said 60s, maybe even uh, 70s, maybe even 60s. So what I'm going to do is I would normally be very, very careful here. I don't know if it's going to work. Hang on. Let me get this bone folder. If I can do this nicely, I will. I might have to, okay, okay, this is working. Okay, good. It's a really, <laughs> it's a really old packaging. So it's actually not that hard to open. So here you can see, I'm gonna pretty much cut off everything that makes it into a box. So I really only wanna keep these three panels. Uh, that's pretty much all I want. Um, yeah, so let's get all the extras cut off. And I'm going to be using my, what is this thing called? Precision Cutter by Fiskars. So that I can get basically everything cut off all at one go. Okay, so there's that. Now, I didn't look up to see if this is worth anything. I doubt it's worth anything, but I didn't look it up. <laughs> I don't do stuff like that. Okay, so let's cut these parts off. And then we need to cut off these two other parts right here. This part right here. I might have to put my camera up a little bit higher. Put this part right here, as well as this little flappy do right here. So this is exciting, y'all. This is really, really exciting. <sighs> Saw this in the in the bathroom of an estate sale. <laughs> and I knew it was meant to be, you guys. I knew it was meant to be. The cardboard right here is a little bit, it seems. I'm trying to see if it's even. If I need to cut it down some more, it doesn't seem like it, but that bottom part is really curved. Let me try and take some of that off, just a little bit, just a sliver so that I don't get that curved part in there. Okay, that's a little bit better. That is a little bit better. So this is going to be a really small journal. It's going to be adorable. Hi, Craft AZ. Let me get my camera up a little bit higher because it needs to be up higher a little bit so you guys can see everything I'm doing. So you guys can see a little bit more of my workspace. One second. Okay, we're back. Okay. So, sorry if you see some sun. Some sun is coming through some blinds and <laughs> it's just what we're dealing with. I will definitely use parts of these as like maybe little tags within the journal. So I will, and I can maybe even make these little tabs on pages or something. I don't know. We will see. I will put these off to the side. This is definitely too pretty of trash to throw away. So I'll put that off to the side. Masha, hello. And I think I said you to already said hi to you already. And Shelly, I believe I said hi to you. I got my cup of coffee, you guys. I really want some coffee today. Okay. So now that we have our little book, I do kind of want to reinforce the cover a little bit more than I normally do. And for this step, I'm actually going to try something new to me. Let's 
like yet others. I'm gonna try something new to me. Um, I'm using this stuff called Tyvek Tape. And this was sent to me by Crafty Irina, so thank you so much for sending this to me. And it is tape here. This one, oh my goodness, this might be a little bit hard. Oh my gosh. Okay, so it's got tape on the tape. I don't know why they would do that. But anyways, maybe it's really, I don't know. I've never worked with this, and I thought this would be really good to, like, reinforce the spine. I didn't know I should have opened this beforehand. <laughs> okay, okay, so this stuff they actually use for a lot of things. Tyvek, um, among being used for construction, like basically when they, ooh, it smells like a Barbie doll. <laughs> when they uh, make houses, they use this stuff. I don't know, I couldn't exactly tell you when. Or for what use. But I know they use it when they make houses. And it smells like a Barbie doll factory. Okay, so. And you can also get this stuff um, in USPS uh, envelopes. If you take one of the envelopes, it'll last you forever. So you don't need to take more than one, really. Okay, okay. So let's get this tape off here. It is just basically plastic sticky back here, but this one is basically plastic tape, really strong tape. And with this, that wasn't supposed to happen. Okay, I'm gonna use a tiny bit of, I'm gonna use a little bit at a time. I don't, I don't trust myself yet with this stuff. It's too new to me. Basically, I'm just going to use this right here to reinforce uh, where it folds, where the book folds, basically. That was a little too much right there. I'm trying to protect the edges here from basically breaking apart because they're so old. And for being closed so much and then being open and closed, it might make them frail. So, that's what this is for, to reinforce that. Of course, I'm missing just a tiny little piece. This stuff, oh my gosh, it smells really like, like I said, like a Barbie factory. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's how I can describe it, Barbie factory. Okay. So, I'm putting it right before the edge because I don't want it to show in the final project. Oh, that one missed a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay, one second. One second. I just need a tiny little sliver. So um this might last me quite a while. <laughs> this will definitely last me a while. I don't plan on making a house, so okay. Now that that's there though. Uh, my method of, what is, I had just found my sample, that's not fair. Hang on, okay, here it is. <laughs> okay, so, I had just, uh, for my method of uh, junk journaling, I'm going to have to scratch this, even though I'm, I'm scratching it so that way I can add glue on top, it makes it less plasticky. And I'm just scratching the tape up. If you were actually using the envelope from the post office, you'd be okay. I just want to make sure that my glue sticks on top of this here. Okay. So just to take off a little bit of the shine of the tie rack and add a little bit of uh, grooves for the glue to hold on to. Scratch this up a little bit. Okay. Again, I have never used this Tyvek before, but I'm just kind of going along with my instincts of roughing it up a little bit. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is I need to make, for the journals that I make, um, 
I love old Avon products and packaging. Great find, right? Isn't that a great find for this one? <laughs> I have to remember which way it goes because it's very specific. Um, off camera, after I'm done with everything, I'm going to put little metal corners here. So that way to further protect it um, from being getting from getting messed up basically <laughs> okay you guys so the next step is to create the inside liner so what i do for my junk journals is i create uh like these uh quilted basic uh patchwork uh quilts fabric uh quilts patchwork whatever you want to call it um and what I do is I turn this basically into paper. So that's what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to make it to the size of this cover right here, which looks like it's pretty much all ready to size width-wise. And then I'll have to cut it. And what we're going to do is this is what I use to sew my signatures into. So I'll sew my signatures into this. Then I'm going to glue this to the inside of the journal. But the first thing we need to do is turn this fabric into paper. So let's go ahead and go and grab my ironing mat. And I'll need my roll of heat and bond. I guess I don't need a whole roll because I have a piece of it. So this is heat and bond light. Um, I will leave a link in the description box so you guys can uh, see what I'm talking about. So we're on the same page. Oh, wait, one second, one second. I have to do, I have to do one step before. I am going to cut the piece of fabric to the size, a little bit more to the size of the journal. So that's what we're gonna do. Give me, I need to find my plate. Okay, here it is. Okay, so I am using my cutting board as well as my rotary cutter to do this. Just because I kind of like to cheat, so I'm doing this the easy way for me. I'm going to cut it down more to size. And I also have a video on how to do this whole patchwork if you are interested in that. So this is going to be the inside cover here. And this is the heat and bond light, which is basically glue that we're going to use to glue paper onto this fabric, basically. Basically. Okay, so let's get this cut up here from the heat and bond. I'll also cut this out with my rotary cutter because why not? Why not? It's just easier than doling up my scissors. My scissors are pretty dull, and I don't want to use my fabric scissors because that's what I would do. <laughs> I would be irresponsible. So let's just do that. Let me cut it on this side too. Okay, so it's not perfect, but that's okay. So, now. Let's get to the iron, ironing part. So I need my ironing board. Well, this is like an iron mat, I should say, for my desk. And let me get my iron. Where is my iron? Where did it go? Oh my gosh. It's not where it normally is, so that means it's somewhere else. Where is it? Uh oh. I guess it's been a minute since I used it. Where is it? Oh my goodness. So unprofessional of me. <laughs> where did I put it? That is so weird. Where is it? Hang on, you guys. Brain fart. Hang on. Oh my gosh. Where's the iron? Okay, okay, okay. Where? I think you can't see me right now. I look ridiculous. Hang on. Where 
It's my iron. Oh my god. I don't want this video to be five minutes of me looking for my iron, y'all. Oh my god. Oh, okay, I found it. Oh my gosh. Totally not where it's supposed to be. So, <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> oh, wait, no. Okay. Okay. I had to go under my desk to plug it in. Okay, so now it's plugged in. <laughs> so now we're going to turn it on to the highest setting. <sighs> you guys, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am tired. Okay, so now I have my iron. It's going to be on the hottest setting. And I'm waiting for that. And what we're going to do is we're going to melt the adhesive that is on this heat and bond here. I'm catching my breath, y'all. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Hi, River City Creative. What's up, girl? Okay, so we are basically trying to melt the glue that is on the heat and bond to the fabric. So I'm still waiting for my iron to finish uh, warming up. It is, uh, it has no water in it. It's just a regular cheapy uh, iron, no water. Okay, and it's ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the iron down on the, I'm using um, parchment paper. Um, you can use parchment paper. I would use parchment paper. Um, you could also, when you're done with the heat and bond, you'll be left with a piece of plastic, basically, that you can use um, instead of this parchment paper. But initially, you want to use parchment paper um, because you don't want to get glue on your iron, basically. And you don't want to slide this around on the fabric. You want to set it down um, and then pick it up after 30 seconds and set it down again. You don't want to slide your iron around. Definitely that. Hi, Crafty Lore. So I'm just super excited. This journal is going to be so cute. It's going to be so little. It took me a while to uh, figure out what size pages I need for it. But I did print out some really cute pages to use. So I'm excited. I got my coffee. And it's too hot for me to drink that so. Okay. And you, you can't technically burn your fabric. <laughs> you can't burn your fabric, so you definitely don't want to keep it on for way too long. Definitely a minute is way too, way too long. So again, you want to pick up the iron and then move it to its next place. You don't want to swirl your iron around if that makes sense. And you can see all the yellow that is burnt from the past uh, products. <laughs> and basically, the glue will stick to your parchment paper instead of sticking to your iron. So again, I'm just wanting to double check to make sure that all the glue on this is melted. I will even iron on the back of it. Just to double check. And this was a piece. So this was a scrap. That's why it says light on there. Because I like to make sure I know which ultra, which um, heat and bond I'm using. You can use heat and bond uh, ultra. And then this is heat and bond light. And I'm using the light normally because I would be sewing um, through this product. I'm actually not going to be sewing through this product. So I could have used the heat and bond uh, ultra hold. But this is just what scrap I had left over. So that's what I'm using. So now the the adhesive should be all glued, all dissolved. I can pretty much tell that it is. Okay, I'm just going to keep it over here. I just like to double check. So I keep it on probably for a little bit longer than I should. Sometimes the, the adhesive really doesn't want to melt. I don't know. I can't, tw I can't tell you why. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Let me get some coffee. I, I want to take the top off, but I'm also afraid I'll spill it everywhere. I have this really, really well insulated bubble cup. And the coffee's too drink too hot to drink. 
and I'm sad. And I'm picking it up, moving it around because I want the, the paper to cool down. <laughs> That's why I'm waving it around. Otherwise, you could just wait, but I'll just wave it around. Okay, so now we basically turn this piece of fabric into an adhesive piece of fabric. But now we got to turn it into paper. See, see right here, I can notice that, that didn't, the glue didn't melt right there. So let me try and fix that. I'm going to get some direct contact here. I'm just trying to make sure that this piece of fabric is nice and glued down. Sometimes it needs a little bit of specialized attention. But other than that, they're all sitting pretty well. That one's pretty much all edges. Okay, so let me get the next piece of paper. Next step. Where is my packing paper? Here it is. So the next step we have is, uh, like I said, we're trying to turn this into paper. So right now what this is, is a piece of fabric. That is adhesive, basically. That's what we have right now. We have a piece of fabric. This is the, the piece of plastic that I'm telling you you're left with, and you can iron on top of this or glue or whatever before you toss it. So you can see the shiny adhesiveness on the back of this regular fabric. So we're going to glue that shiny side down onto this stuff called packing paper. And it's basically what it sounds like when you move and uh, you got dishes or you got nice stuff that you wanna cover. You buy packing paper to like throw on your dishes or whatever. You could also use tissue paper. Um, the tissue paper is, will basically make the fabric see through. And I have a lot of white fabrics on here that I don't want to be see through. So I use packing paper and packing paper uh, makes it so that it's not see-through. So that it has like a nice, almost a white layer. It's gray, but it's almost like a white layer behind your fabric. So that's great. Pet, I finally caught you live. Hi Daisy, I'm sorry I'm late. It's your fault. Yes, you're right. It is my fault because <laughs> I'm here late. But oh, thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate that so, so much. Um, I'll make sure and get those out to you really, really soon. Um, and I'm over here trying to melt this glue here so that I can get on with the next step of the journal. But look how pretty this box is, you guys. I just saw this box and I just got way too excited. My like, gold foil, it's beautiful, you guys. So beautiful. Okay, so this part always takes a minute because you're basically making a whole inside cover liner for this journal. So you can make this ahead of time. And on, when it's on paper, then you can go ahead and move your iron back and forth. Um, but you can definitely make this ahead of time. I have a bunch of pieces like already like this already made into patchwork. I also have, have some that are already backed up on packing paper. They're a little bit too big for this. So I decided to use one of my small patchworks. So there we go. So now it's all nice. You can always tell when it's not glued down. You want it to be all nice and glued down. No bubbling. Okay. Okay, now we're all good. So now we're going to let that cool down a little bit. I'm going to unplug my iron. One moment. Okay, okay. Sorry, I have to unplug it from underneath my desk. <laughs> and my hair is a little tall today, so. <laughs> it's like in a tall bun. So that's a little bit hard and I didn't think about it. Okay, so. Now what we wanna do is we wanna cut this out. And I got that packing paper at Walmart. I'm sure you can get it anywhere else, but I got it at Walmart myself. Get my ironing pad out the way. 
this still has to cool down a little bit before I can use it. But basically what we want to do is we're going to cut this piece of fabric to be specifically the size of this journal. That's our next step. I'm trying to let this cool down so it doesn't warp my um, cutting board. <laughs> Oh, isn't it such a beautiful box? It's foiled and everything. So again, in the first step, we went ahead and backed the spine up with some Tyvek because it is a vintage box. So I wanted to make sure and have it give it a little bit more reinforcement. And then we also made our fabric paper background. That's going to be the background, basically. So let's go ahead and cut this paper exactly to size here be very careful to not cut the box itself. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and write to rotate the whole mat because I don't really want to move this. Okay, and then turning the whole mat again. <laughs> okay, it's going to be exactly the size of the box. could use a lazy Susan right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Ooh, I am literally holding my breath because I do not want to cut this. I got the box! Ah! <laughs> okay, we're going to fix that. We are going to fix that. I was trying to be so careful, you guys, and I cut the box. But it's okay. We're going to fix it. A little bit of Tyvek will help us. <laughs> I'm still shocked right now. I could have done better. Of course, there's only one box. <laughs> and I cut the cover too. That's okay. We'll fix that too. That'll be fine. Booba, you said I cut the box, Booba! Booba! <laughs> He's upset at me too. <laughs> was being so careful. I, sh I really should have used my um my plastic piece, whatever that is, the plastic uh, thing I use for it. But it's okay. We're going to fix this. We're going to fix it little by little. These things happen, you guys. This is, this is real life, y'all. This is real life. But I'm going to fix it. We got the best band-aids in the world right here. That's for sure. Right there. You almost can't see it on the outside. Okay, okay. I mean, it happens. It's just, it happens. You can't say anything else than that. <laughs> Luckily, like I said, this is basically the best band aid. Okay, okay. Okay, so it's pretty much with the fabric on there, it'll be stable. I could also cut it down a little bit more. I could do that instead of this, so that way it's not bugging me as the integrity of the journal. Hang on, I'm going to cut it. I'm going to do it. I just decided we're doing some surgery, y'all. Okay, hold your breaths for me because I'm going to cut off the part that I just ripped or that I cut off ex accidentally. So we're doing a little bit of surgery. We're just going to go in. We're just going to cut off the damaged part. And you know what? That's still okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so now we cut off the damaged part. So we're good. We cut off the Tyvek because that is hard to rip through. Okay, so we're good. We're good again. It just <laughs> the journal. Let me see if the printed pages that I made for it still fit. That's hilarious. I'll have to slice off just a tiny bit of the pages. Just the slightest bit. <laughs> okay. Now, what I should have done. <laughs> what I should have done is 
I should have. Let's let's talk about what I should have done. <laughs> what I should have done was this right here. Wait, this is too short. What I should have done was kept a little guard like this right here, so that would have never happened. But you know what? You live and you learn. That's what I should have done. That would have never happened. Okay. Such is life, you guys. Such is life. Now it's just a smaller journal. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that this is exactly the size of this cover. I'm not trying to do no redos. It looks like I could use like a sliver off just to sliver. And I think I'd rather do that literally after the journal is put together. We'll figure that out. <laughs> no, I think it's good. It just, it looks like it to me, but it's actually good. It's actually the, the same size. Okay, good. So now what we're going to do is I need to actually sew this. Well, I guess I don't need to do that. What I need to do is cut the pages to size right now because this is pretty much done. This is going to go on the inside of here, the cover. Okay, so let's get the pages cut up to size because I haven't done that. And I did say in my last uh, video that I was going to show you guys um, like all the pages and how I pick the pages and all that, etc. So we are on that whole journey. So I have some printables. I'm still going to be using my... Um, newest journal kit, which is uh, Birds, Bees, and Peonies, because I figured this set goes, even with the covers, it looks beautiful with the cover. So I thought that's what we're going to do. Dark journals are so forgiving, right? <laughs> it's at the bottom. That would be good, too. Uh, okay, so let me see the chat. I just, I'm catching my breath again from what just happened. Okay, so I was working on some things, so I missed the chat. Uh, I was thinking embossing powders or gold leaf. It is actually, yes, an old vintage uh, Avon box. So, <laughs> so now I just have to cut down these printables just a bit. These should, yeah, these still work. Let me go get the ones that are still at the printer so we can get started on the next couple of steps. So I figured I'm gonna do two signatures since I don't wanna I don't wanna jam everything onto one signature. So we're gonna do two signatures. And I actually already have a lot of papers. Okay, so I have this little dirty secret, right? So after I after I pick out papers for signatures, I tend to have extra signatures to act extra pages. I just go on about and I just pick pages and next thing you know, I got like 30 page signatures and it's too much. So then I end up throwing all these extra pages into a box. So now I actually have a nice collection of papers that are pretty much already like small like already cut in half and everything so uh, i got i gotta make i gotta check and see what kind of papers i do want to put a coffee dyed paper and so i said i'm figured i'm going to put two signatures in this journal they're not going to be very big though because the <laughs> the spine is really small so i figured two signatures maybe 10 pages each signature tops like tops it should really be about eight but i'm gonna put tops 10 pages in each, each signature so it's still gonna be a little chunky journal definitely um so 10 pages per signature two signatures so i'm saying that to myself because i gotta remember <laughs> and i am using scrapbook paper i have book paper so I have about four of the journal pages and about two 
smaller pages of ephemera that go in between those pages. So that means I already have five pages. So that means I need another five pages. So, oh my gosh, this should be easy, but of course it's not going to be easy for me because I always like to put way too much stuff in my journal, <laughs> in my journals. So it's always like a big, uh, it's going to be hard to stop adding pages to the journals. So let's, oh, I have this. This is already exactly the size of one of them. So that's one of them. Um, let's see here. Here's like a, another ephemera. So we'll put that in another signature, this signature right here. And let's see. This is a pretty cool page that'll go here and then I need I'm gonna need another lined page there so how about so hard to decide what to put in these journals because you know I'm gonna decorate every page so that's why I put in the number of signatures that I put in and the number of pages I put in because I over decorate things so much so there's five here is four Four. I need one more on this one. Let's do this orangey paper. Okay, so that should be it. I'm gonna, once I cut them down to size and fit them in the journal, we'll see if I can fit more pages, but I think 10 is good. I always tend to put 15, but it's such a tidy journal, and I, again, I'm gonna want to decorate them. So, let's stick to 10 pages per signature. And we're going to have to cut down these pages to size. So I want to make sure I got a little bit of writing paper, a little bit of book paper, and of course some printables. So that is the mix I'm going for, hopefully, <laughs> uh, because I had to shorten up that journal. Um, now I have to shorten up some of the pages, of course, of course. That's it. These up. These, this must be one per signature. And like I said, hopefully they still fit. Let's see. Height wise. Let's see. I think that's probably the highest any page should be. It should probably be even lower than that. Let's see how high that is. It's, um, we're going to make this four and three quarters. That's going to be the height of all of our pages. Four and three quarters. So let's make that happen there. That should be good. This needs to be fixed. These journal pages that are I printed out really, really small. They've all got to be fixed. Not by much, but just by a little bit. He looks so tiny and little. Okay, so four and three quarters. So, I got these. I printed these on the back of scrapbook paper to add a little bit of interest. And I guess on this scrapbook paper, I like painted with white paint. I don't know why, but I did a while ago, like a long time ago. Okay, so let's get these papers cut up to size. Uh, the width is what? What's the width? Let's see. The width is four inches. So they will have to be shorter than that. So let's cut this to size and let's try to figure out what size these are going to be. Maybe we'll make it uh, three and three quarters and let's see how that fits. That is still too big. You can see that. You don't want your page to go to the edge of the journal. You want it to be slightly smaller than your journal. So three and a half. Three and a half is good. You see how you give yourself like a little border around, you give yourself like a little border around your book and that's how you know how big they need to be. Of course, these are all big. These are all weird here. Oh, Lori, I'm so sorry. That is tough, girl. I'm, I, 
my condolences go out to you and your family, of course. And I hope my journal can bring you a little bit of a smile. I need to send it off to you. I'm going to send it off to you on Monday. Four and three quarters. It's already the size it needs to be. Some of these pages are pretty much the same size, but they're not. So I'm going to cut them one by one. And you just want to make sure you have the spine up against <laughs> the left hand side, of course. These are going to be the smallest. The sm this is definitely the smallest junk journal I've ever made. I don't think I've made a smaller junk journal than this. So this is just going to be totally adorable. I'm going to make sure I make the title say mini. <laughs> that is going to be a nice size drum for and then it just shrunk. It, it only shrunk by a little bit, but still. <laughs> it happens, you guys. It really does happen, though. Oh, my God. I'm just cutting these to size, you guys. All the action is happening over here, of course. I wanted to do all these steps with you guys this time. I'll probably come back tomorrow to decorate once we put it all together. I, might, I don't know, do I want to put lace? I guess not. I guess it's really small for lace, but I kind of do want to put lace. <sighs> Maybe I'll put some of the uh, fabric ruffles I made. So this always, <laughs> I always say it's a quick project, but you guys, it's never a quick project ever. Ever, never, ever a quick project. I just wanted to put it together right now, but hey, I kind of want to put ruffles. I made some ruffles, and now this is a project to use. Again. So, of course, these are all going in the scrap bin. All these papers here all go in the scrap bin. So, give me one second. Let me go put them over there. I will forget you guys. Oh my gosh. I'll put that here. So. Uh, okay, you guys, so now we got all these pages. And I gotta fold them in half. So, give me, let me get the, the scoreboard. <laughs> okay, I don't know where my mini scoreboard is, or I would be using it right now. But it is currently missing, and I need to learn how to put my tools back. I'm not good at that yet at all. They didn't teach me that in school. I don't know. So let's just fold all these little elements in half so we can start making our signatures. And I really like using my little uh, scoreboard so I can get them nice and in the middle. Instead of trying to eyeball it myself, I'm not good at that. Never come out straight ever. This is so tiny. It's a little ridiculous how tiny this is. <laughs> so not used to such small things like this. Normally, my journals are made from like an eight and a half by eleven size sheet of paper. So, and I don't make them any smaller than that. Why is this smaller? Hang on, why is this bigger and these are smaller? Why? They're not. They are not, but why is it? It is actually, it's bigger, it's wider. Why is it wider? I don't know, why aren't these as wide? What did I do? Okay, maybe this one's supposed to be cut. <laughs> because I'm like, it's not the right size. This is supposed to be, oh right, it's already supposed to be folded in half when I cut it, so hang on. Hang on. Okay. So brain fart, but okay, we're good. It's supposed to be three. And half, yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is. Okay, I don't know why this one's wider than the other ones. Okay. But I'm not going to worry about it. 
I'm just not. <laughs> okay, so we got okay, these three things to do. And I did print on the inside of a lot of scrapbook paper. So you'll see a lot of scrapbook paper everywhere. ready to get this together. I want to put ruffles though, so we're not exactly ready. <laughs> I always want to do something extra. Okay, but we are ready to basically make the signature. So I'm going to divide these up into the junk journal kit pages, uh, mis miscellaneous printables, Miscellaneous, miscellaneous. There's three miscellaneous printables here. And then we're also going to divide scrapbook paper. We'll call this scrapbook paper. And then ephemera, uh, lined paper, and then we'll call these two book papers. So that's how I like to separate out my pages. So that way I know if I grab one from each little bunch, you'll never get two pages together that are the same. So. I'm going to start off with a scrapbook page that will be on the outside of the signature. We'll go in with the lined piece of paper. We'll go in with one of the printables from uh, just random printable. Then we will go with, so we're going in with book paper, I mean this uh, copy dye paper. Then we'll go in with another page from the journal. So we're at five pages now, so I need five more. And I go in with one of the printables. This one is too wide, so we gotta fix that one. Okay, then I can visually see what's wrong. I'm gonna go in with the lined paper here. Let's see, that's one page, two page, three page, four, five, six, seven. I need to go in with another one of the journal pages. Isn't there supposed to be four? There's already two here, so I guess it's three and three. Okay, I thought it was four and four, but it's three and three. And then we'll go in with one of the really cute file folders. So let's see how many pages that is already. I don't think I've put one of these ephemera pages in there yet. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, this ephemera is going to be number 10 and it'll be in the middle. And since it's in the middle, what I need is a pencil. And we are going to draw a line down the middle of that. And I need to fix these two papers, but we'll do that in a second. So now let's make our second signature, and this should be pretty easy. Again, I'm going to use one of the journal pages here in the back. Um, yeah, to be the it's the outside cover of the signature, basically. And of course, I'm just going around um, doing different papers from the stack here, but you'll never won't run into a problem if you do it this way. That way they're always a different page. And then we'll go in with junk journal, page from the kit, scrapbook paper. Go in with this miscellaneous junk journal paper. Ah, we'll go in with this lined paper, then the journal kit paper, and then We'll use this little um, file folder and that'll be in the middle. And again, I'm going to hit it with the line here. Sorry, when I'm sewing, I know where it is to sew. Okay, so those are our two signatures. I do got to fix those there. So that's okay. So that's going to be my two signatures now. It looks like I could actually use three signatures. Is that too much? Is that too much? Like I said, I'm going to decorate each signature. So actually, no, it'll be fine. I need a little bit of space in between and a little bit of space to the right of each signature. So actually, it's fine. It's just my imagination. 
<laughs> just my imagination trying to see if there's more space. <laughs> I have plenty of pages. Okay, so let me fix those two pages and then I'm going to add ruffles in it. I don't care. I don't care how small this turtle is. <laughs> I'm adding ruffles. Can't stop me. <laughs> so three and a half wide. That was the problem. So that signature is fixed. I'm going to fix this one here. Thank you, Nettie. Go ahead and check out my shop if you do like the printables. I do have a lot of stuff for your junk journals, you guys. And I'm designing new stuff all the time. Okay, so that's three and a half. Okay, so next I'm going to add ruffles <laughs> to some of the pages. So they're going to be super fluffy, and I'm going to be very excited. So let me pull up my iron, my iron, <laughs> my sewing machine, and you guys can see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add, um, I am just going to add ruffles to some of the pages. So let's do that. I'm going to make sure everything's facing right. Okay. So let me grab my ruffles. There they are. Here they are. Okay, so I have big rolls of ruffles, but these are really not going to be that big. These are actually pretty tiny. So you can see my roll here. I'm very proud of my little roll of ruffles. It took me a long time to make them. <laughs> so I like to put a set of ruffles on each page, on each side of the page. I will probably put three ruffles on each signature, so that way they're not too fluffy. So I just skip every couple of pages and I'll add, I'll add a ruffle to that page. It's two of them, and I really, I did this live, you guys, so if you guys want to see how to do it, I did do it live, and I'll leave the link at the end of the video, of course. One more. Okay, and that's per signature, so that's one signature, so now I need to make six more for the next signature. Two, three, four, five, and this one will be six. Yes, look how beautiful it is. It's like the size of my face. I love it. <laughs> uh, push it up, push it up, Patricia. Oh, coffee, you guys. I, I don't know what it is about coffee. I'm normally not a coffee drinker, but just lately, it's been hitting the spot. Okay, so. Let's add our ruffles, and I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to do a zigzag stitch probably would be the easiest. So I'm going to do a wide and long zigzag stitch. I'll do it on the first page. This is such a small junk journal, I'm not used to it. <laughs> this is like the size of a junk journal card. <laughs> normally junk journal card right here and it's hard to see well normally my center is centered but it's a little hard to, to kind of tell where it's supposed to go but that's okay and i can definitely put it off to the side but i don't need to okay and i'm using a beige thread so you really can't see what i just sewed but I did attach it so you can tell that it's attached. Okay, now let's do the other side. Of course, you don't have to do any of this. <laughs> I just really like to make my journals really super extra. <laughs> really super frilly and everything like that. Okay, okay. 
spot. Try to make it so this line in the middle is actually like on the edge of the page. It's a little hard to guess if you're doing it right or not. Ah, okay, I didn't do it right there at the end. <laughs> okay, we'll go back and fix it. Attach it to the page. Okay. This book is going to be so fluffy. <laughs> okay, so there's the one. And now we're going to skip a couple pages. I guess three pages. I guess we'll have to do, yeah, three pages. We'll go through the next one. This is too cute, you guys. <laughs> it's so little. Okay. This junk journal, I just, I just can't. I've, I've, wa I've been wanting to make a small junk journal. Um, and this is just beyond my level of comfort, so I'm kind of happy about it. I, know, I just don't do junk journals this small, but it's just so cute. I just had to. I have this one other box that I actually want to make into a mini journal. So maybe now I'll find the encouragement to do it. Okay, so there's that page. So one, two, three. Okay. All right, okay, so there's two pages in between. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to figure out what next page to sew on. Okay. That will work here. Let's put this in place. Here we go. So, still have to decide on the fabrics and the width, then rip or cut the proper size. What am I, what am I, what am I missing? Oh, you can buy a special ruffle foot. Yes, ruffle foot. The smallest junk journal I made was two inches by three inches. What? That's kind of insane. Uh, it's, for, it's a junk journal for ants, you guys. That is too small. <laughs> you know that joke from that movie? Like, what is this, for ants? <laughs> That's That's a little much. That's a little much for me. Ruffles. I add ruffles to everything. Okay. So that should be it. Yeah, that's the middle. There's the middle. Okay, so we're good here. <laughs> it looks adorable. Oh my goodness. I've always watched, what's her name? Angie. She was on my design team at one point. Is it Angie Hayden? Is it? I can't remember her name. Her name is Angie. She always makes the most beautiful uh, journals, and they always have a bunch of ruffles. And I always envied her. I wanted to have the same type of journal. So that is so adorable with the ruffles on there. Oh my God. I can't even, you guys. I just can't right now. I just cannot. <laughs> so let's do the next signature, and then we can put it all together <laughs> once I uh, finish being super extra. <laughs> okay, so let's get this sewn on here. And tomorrow, since I have nothing else to do, I am going to go live and I'll probably, uh, I'm going to decorate it tomorrow for sure. Because today it's almost been an hour and I'm not even done yet. But, <laughs> but tomorrow we will decorate it. So I'm excited about that. I'm of 
course, going to be using the ephemera set from my Birds, Bees, and Peonies junk journal. So that is what we are working along with. So I'll have all the ephemera tomorrow. I don't forget because the last time I can't believe I forgot you guys. Like, why would I do that? <laughs> I forgot what journal I was using. I don't know. Okay, so there's that one. So let's keep going. So I'm doing every third page. One, two, and then page three. So that's how I decided what pages to do. The third page, there's some pages. So that's why that's the choice. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> Just let me know when and I'm there. I don't know when, it'll just be like when I'm ready because I have to get up, you know, and get the ephemera ready. I don't know what time I'll be going by, but <sighs> just check me out every sometime tomorrow. <laughs> Saturday. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't get this to attach. Okay, okay, I know what I'm doing wrong. So I want to attach it down the center, but it is not down the center. It needs to be off to the side of the way. Okay, so now let's do the other side. These ruffles are kind of everything. I might need to spend a whole week making them to keep them in my stash. Possibly. Yeah. Sounds good to me. It literally took me a whole weekend to make those two rolls that I have, you guys. A whole weekend. <laughs> pretty much all I did for a whole weekend. So I can see why Paula Lemon is, is selling them for the prices she's selling. Because, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work. <laughs> Good for her. <laughs> Get your money, girl. Get your money. <laughs> this signature might call for four of these. I don't, I don't want to do it, but I think it might call for four ruffles. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Okay, here we go. I do have to clean my room because I said I was going to do a room tour and I have to clean it, you guys. <laughs> Before I show it to you guys, I got to clean it up. It's messy. And if I do that, I got to clean my kitchen because you see my kitchen in my room. So <laughs> I got to at least clean off the, the cabinets or the... <sighs> what am I trying to say? The... Uh, the counters. <laughs> the counters are so interesting. Okay, this is off. That is way off. That's not supposed to be there. It's supposed to be over here. All the way over here. Okay, that's better. Better, better. Okay, so there we go. That should be the last one that we have to do with uh, the plating here. They're not ruffled. They're plating. Okay, I can. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Let's see if this is okay. <laughs> it's so cute. It's so freaking cute with the. <laughs> okay, we're good. <laughs> it's still so cute. Okay. So now, definitely, now it looks like it's going to fill it up. Before, it looked like it was way empty. And now it looks like it's actually going to fill it up. So, yay. And all the pages come up to the edge. They come out just a little bit, which is what I like. That's why we put our papers where we did. So now what I have is, where is that fabric piece? Okay, here's the fabric piece that's going to uh, be what our signatures are sewn into. But I have to do one last thing, which is kind of uh, sew the edge around. Because there are some pieces that basically overlap and they are not glued down by anything. So you can see that. And that's just because I did this whole like quilt thing on this uh, paper, so that's why. But let me just go ahead and sew around the edges. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually sew the signatures in. So I'm just doing basically like a zigzag all the way around the edge. 
much, so it doesn't fray your lips. So now, I basically fix the edges. Let me get my camera pointed back down. <laughs> so you guys can see what I'm doing here. Now this piece of fabric is exactly the same size as this cover, exactly the same size. So now what we're gonna do is we need to figure out where our signatures are gonna be placed. So first thing we need to do is I need to get my scoreboard. So we pull out the world's oldest <laughs> Martha Stewart scoreboard you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> this is from back in the days when I used to do cards, you guys. So it's really old. <laughs> oh, I need coffee. Save me. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so now to figure out where the signatures are going to be, first we need to figure out where the center of this whole thing is, right? So let's fold this in half. Now fold it both ways so I get a nice crisp uh, defined line in the center. So this is our center line, and I'm going to go ahead and draw uh, with my pencil a line down the middle. And this is not going to show because this is basically the back. This is going to get glued onto the cover. So <clears throat> I need to measure. Uh, the, 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 the spine is an inch and a half wide. So from here to here is an inch. From the four to the five is an inch. Um, okay, let me figure this out this way. From this to here is an inch. And then there, okay, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm trying to make this make sense to me. Here's an inch. This is the center. I'm going to do, uh, should I do half inch to the right? No, I'm going to do actually, I don't know what this little line is called. There is a little line. That, and I'm using this one because this, this one is a little bit rounded and this one's a little bit sharper. So it'll cut through the ink. So whatever this little line is here, I'm sure it has a number. I just don't know what number it is. It's almost half an inch to the right, but it's not half an inch. It's the little notch before half an inch. So whatever that is. <laughs> whatever that is, that's where my two signatures are going to be. That is too short. I think I messed up. Okay. I did. Okay, that's better. Okay, so I'm going to make another line here so I know... Where that is, and I basically uh, make it this way on my scoreboard, and along with the materials that I'm using with the paper. Basically, it makes everything super like perforated and very, very scored. So that way, I can do the next step, which is going to be the sewing of the signatures and such. So there we go. This is where my two signatures are gonna be sewn into. There's gonna be a, like a half inch gap in between, a little bit, no, a little bit more than half inch. 
It's definitely more than half inch gap. It's almost an inch gap. Let's see. Let me just make sure that that's going to be okay. This up against here. Yeah, that looks about okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure that there's enough gaps to the sides and everything. Okay, that's good. So let's do our next step, which is going to be sewing in the signatures into this right here. And I do want to make a line on the inside liner so that way I can physically tell where the edges are supposed to be and everything like that. And of course, you're not going to be able to see this in the final project. You will not be able to see these lines. Okay, so there we go. I can physically tell where it's going to be. I have my caper clips, which might be overkill for this journal. <laughs> my paper clips are literally the size of the journal pages, so I don't know how well this is going to work, but let's figure it out. Let's find out together, you guys. Okay. So, we have the signature, and since they're so small, I'm really not even going to use a piece of chipboard. I'm literally just going <laughs> to do it like this, just going to set them all together, and then we're going to just sew it. I'm not even going to wait. Actually, this one might be a little too tall. Oh my God, the center page is too tall. Give me one second. Let me slice it off a little bit. And actually, I think I do need a piece of chipboard. It's like too floppy for me. Hang on, hang on. Okay, so piece of chipboard. I've already filed it away. I put my stuff away in places where it should be. And now, good luck finding anything. Okay, here it is. Okay, here it is. Okay. Okay, I like to use a piece of chipboard. And this one is definitely way too large, but I guess I'll live. And I'm basically just going to set the pages on here. Oh, this is way too wide. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Okay, okay that's better. Cut it down to size. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to... Wrap the pages around this piece of chipboard. And basically what it does is it just keeps all the spine pages up against the spine nicely. It doesn't feel like it's flopping around for me. I've kind of, I guess I've grown accustomed to it and I felt kind of weird trying to do it without. <laughs> it felt really strange. Okay, so let's get this journal sewn together. And I sew my signatures in with the sewing machine. I don't know about you guys. I don't know what you guys do, but that's what I do. With my sewing machine. Okay, so last page. Okay, so now I'm holding it up tight, and now we're going to place it. This is why I, like, make the line so I can physically see. And when I fold it, I can physically feel a lot of physicals uh, when, where it's in the middle. And now I can go ahead and paperclip this. It's so like skinny that it just, it's not really even holding on to anything. Okay, this one's better. It's less loose. Okay, so let's get to our sewing machine. Back up a little bit so you guys can see. You sew your signatures in by hand. I have done that in the past. I just find this to be easier for me. And faster for me. So that's just what I do. So we are going into my sewing machine and I am going to be picking a straight stitch and I'm going to put this on the longest setting, on the longest length. And if you guys need to know, I do use the Brothers Project Runway Limited Edition CE1125PRW. Again, I'm using stitch number one, which is a straight stitch on my machine with a length of five. Okay. So here we go. Again, just making sure everything's in line. Okay, so you see this right here? The bottom has a lot more fabric than the top. That kind of bothers me, so I need to fix that before I sew this on. I need to have even amount of fabric on the top and bottom. 
even, even. Sometimes it moves around on you. But again, that's why I make markings. Okay, that one's good. That's good. That's why I make markings on the top and the bottom of the cover. Okay, so let's go. So now I have a line down the center that I drew so that way I can tell where I'm supposed to be sewing. Oh, and I needed a, I didn't uh, backstitch, so let me backstitch. One more, and then we'll backstitch and backstitch. And that is our first signature being attached. I have to use, the, these are newer paper clips. I've had them, I think um, Irina sent them to me. These ones are a little, as you can see, they're a little worn out because I usually use them on bigger turtles. <laughs> okay, so that is our first signature. And you can definitely use this um, technique with the heat and bond and the packing paper. You can still uh, use this with a pamphlet stitch. You just do your little pamphlet stitch instead of sewing it with the sewing machine. So it's still a sort of invisible spine junk journal, um, if you will. So let's do the next signature. So again, I have a piece of uh, chipboard here that is practically the same, almost, yeah, it's the same height as the junk journal. So that way I know where my pages are supposed to be. So they're all centered. And I keep them all nice and tied up against the spine. That's the most important part. For me, anyways, I've done this way too long. I've done this way too many times, you guys. <laughs> so let's make sure it's nice and held. And then we will get this sewn on. This is going to be so cute. I can't even stand it right now. <laughs> it's adorable. Okay, this is the last page. And again, we're going to set it here on the spine where it's supposed to go. Open it. Make sure it's still on the spine where you want it to go. Make sure there's fabric on top and on the bottom and it's even. Okay, and now we're going to go ahead and hold it down paper clips here. And then another one up here. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now we're going to sew this in. And uh, again, I can physically feel that it's in the middle. And we are going to go one, two, and then backstitch. Sorry if I'm not exactly centered. I've actually like even made a mistake and gone back, fixed it, and sewed it again, and it was just fine. Okay, you guys, I can uh, breathe again. <laughs> this part is always the part where I hold my breath all the time. So now we have our little book sewn into the cover, and it looks freaking adorable with the ruffles. I can't even. Okay, so let's get this all together. Here are all the pages put together. And now we are going to glue this cover into the journal, you guys. So let me get out. Where did that piece of parchment paper go? It just disappeared. Like, wow, I had a big old piece of parchment paper. Oh, and now I don't see it. Okay. So let me get something else. One moment. One moment. Okay, we're almost done. <laughs> we're done with the sewing machine anyway, so we're done with that. So we're over here now. And so like I said, we need to glue this onto the cover and I need to make sure my cover's straight and it's not crooked or nothing. Okay, so I have, again, these are all pieces of heat and It's just the back of it. I like to use it to glue on top of. I got my glue 
actually need to unplug. Which is great because I lost the cap to it, so I'm not even mad at it when it plugs up. Because it just acts like a natural plug. <laughs> okay, so this will be the last step for today. I know today's video went a little overboard, but you know what? This is real life, you guys, and mistakes happen. <laughs> And things that are not planned out happen too. <laughs> okay. So somehow I was going to tell a bit. That holds the heck out of me as I can throw straight stitches for days. Oh my God. I don't know. Sometimes it happens. And what I'm going to need is I'm going to need my silicone brush. Now, I love these silicone brushes to move around glue. What do you want? The door is open and you have wet glue. What do you want? I mean, wet food, not wet glue. <laughs> I don't know what you want, boy. So, let's get this all glued in. Okay, so the glue that I prefer to use for this type of project is the uh, Eileen's Turbo Tacky Glue. And I like to use this pretty much for um, all my junk journal projects, whether I'm gluing in embellishments or I am just um, gluing on the cover. <laughs> I pretty much use the same glue. You want to make sure you get a nice amount of glue inside all the stitches because that's important too. So again, I just use this brush to move the glue to where it's supposed to be. Much better than a brush because a brush will absorb the glue and this does not absorb any glue because it's silicone. So that is what is great about this, this brush. It just like moves the glue to where it needs to be. It doesn't absorb it, which I love. So again, you want to make sure and get a lot of glue in between the stitches. Don't want to skip out on glue on this step at all. And I'm running out of glue. Good thing I'm going to Walmart today. I got to remember to buy more. Okay, you guys. So I like to do half and half. So right now I'm going to do this half of the journal. Make sure it's on the right side of the cover. I don't want to get any glue on my cover, so move all that out the way. Triple checking we're on the right side of the cover. And now this cover piece right here is exactly the size of this box, so it should fit like a glove. Like a glove. Okay, we are going. It's fitting. It is working. And now we get to part of the spine. So let's add more glue. So we can move down the spine. Let me go ahead and free up these pages. This cat has found a toy, which is a piece of paper. So sorry if you hear some noises. <laughs> it's just my cat being a cat, you guys. Now make sure you get a nice amount of glue here, especially on the on the edges where it's gonna fold. I could have probably done this in one go. I'm just used to doing this in a couple steps. <laughs> I'm just really used to it. And I definitely want to add a lot more glue to the spine here because I have Tyvek on. Okay, let me get the glue on here. We're spreading it. I am not missing out on glue on any part here at all. Not messing around. Okay, so now I'm going to get glue over here. Normally I would have glued down the spine, but this is so tiny, I'm not used to it. So <laughs> I could have done everything in one go, but it's okay. It's just how I work. We are almost done here. last step of the day and this definitely I do like to leave my junk journals to dry overnight so I do, I do like to I like to leave it dry during the day closed and then at night I'll leave it dry and open or backwards I leave it dry and open first and then I leave it dry and close that's right <laughs> sorry that's what I meant to say okay so make sure you have glue all the way down here Definitely don't want to skimp out on the glue. And you can tuck in all these, these uh, threads that I did cut off. You can tuck them in. <laughs> and 
and let them be absorbed by the journal. Okay, so that does it for all the glue that I need to add to this journal. So let's close it up. Let me just get this glue off my fingers first before I handle the journal. Okay, okay set up the signatures. Put this all down. There we go. That is perfect. It's exactly the size of the box, you guys. It's a beautiful thing, you guys. I gotta let this dry. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna put the sign I'm gonna put the pages together again like I did. And then I'm gonna get a whatever tool you have. Get the glue off the edges here. You just wanna make sure you rub everything in such as this, such as this, everything rubbed in. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we need some regular paper clips this time. And the regular paper clips we are going to use to kind of keep a couple of edges I always find like to lift off, which is to the left and to the right of each signature they like to lift off. So I, I need to buy more paper clips because I they're kind of done after this step right here. I kind of like mess them up to take them out. So to the left and to the right of each signature like that. And on the bottom and on the top. Very important, bottom and top. there right here and I'm missing one paper clip oh but I wouldn't give for one more paper clip I have to buy more paper clips too okay so you guys I gotta let this dry like this flat and then I will let it dry at night closed so you guys know what the steps are and we'll be back tomorrow to decorate it so I hope you guys en are enjoying this little series it's only gonna be I guess like a two-part because we're back tomorrow to decorate and that's pretty much it so you guys, this is exciting. Mistakes happen. Uh, there was issues, but you know what? We fixed it and we're good. We're good now. <laughs> we are good. So we are just going to wait for this dry. And then you guys will be back tomorrow. And I will probably have the corners hammered in by then. I really don't want to hammer up with you guys on camera. <laughs> it might be a little bit much. So you guys come back tomorrow. And we'll get this decorated. We'll have a little bit of weekend fun, which I normally don't do. And I can't really tell you what time I'm going to go live. But um, just stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel. Um, and just expect a new video tomorrow if you're not here li uh, live. But thank you guys so, so much for joining me on the making of this particular beautiful journal here. It's been a fun adventure. <laughs> it's been a journey, you guys. It's been a fun journey. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will see you guys tomorrow. We will decorate it. Have a good weekend, you guys. Bye.